Hello. Today, I'm going to be honest, it's, it, it seems kind of like a nonsense video. I'm going to be reacting to 10 things you should never do in the United States. And I'm an American. I'm just kind of curious because to me as an American, I'm like, what can't you do? <laughs> what can't you do? I don't know. I, I, it seems like I can do whatever I want. <laughs> but that's probably just because I, I live here and I've been ingrained like inside a box of what I can and can't do. <laughs> so I'm just kind of curious what this guy has to say. In today's... I mean, I got to shout him out, you know, 30 and a wake up. What a name of a channel. 30 and a wake up. Go check him out. Link down below video i'm going to tell you 10 things you should never do in the united okay. states let's see how many of these i've done what is going on youtube greetings from my apartment here in valencia spain i've been traveling the world full time for almost 12 months now and one of my favorite this is the whitest apartment i've ever seen things to do just needs a white dinner table do before i get to a new country is to research the things to do but also research the things not to do i think it's probably more important just as important to know what not to do as it is to know what to do in a country <laughs> so in today's video i'm going to switch it up a little bit and tell you what not to do in my country of the united states let me preface this by saying the United States is a huge country and culturally it can be very different depending on what part of the country you're in. Hawaii is way different than Texas. Texas I almost is forgot about Hawaii. way different than California. California is way different than New York and so on and so on. But there are some things that apply basically throughout the country. So those are the things that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, number one. Never visit just New York or Disney World. Anytime someone tells me they've been in the United States, it's usually one of two places. They've either been to New York or they've been to Disney World or Disneyland. The United mm. States is so much more than that. It's so big and diverse. Man, I'm trying to think, like, if you only get to go one place, like if you're only coming to America for a week, I don't think New York is a bad idea. Yeah, or Disney. I, I personally would go to Disney World over New York just because it's more my, my style, I guess. It's more fun. You have a zillion lakes in a place like Minnesota. You have the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. You have a Patagonia type place in Montana. I haven't even been to almost any of these places. You have amazing tropical beaches in a place like Hawaii. You have awesome Tex-Mex food down in Texas. And you have the most amazing forests and wildlife in a place like Washington State. I know you wanna see New York and Disney World and I definitely think you should, but if you're gonna plan a trip to the United States at another location. It's, it's kind of interesting though, hearing Disney World. I didn't know that was like a big um, travel destination. And go see something different and it'll show you how really diverse and beautiful this country is outside of those two popular destinations. Okay, the next one on the list is a little bit more serious. Never get out of your car when you're stopped by the police. In many parts of the world, it is customary to get out of your car when the police stop you. I didn't know that. That is not the case in the United States, and you definitely don't want to do this. Although you can. You can do it. <laughs> you should not. I mean, you can do it until they tell you not to. Then you can't. But initially, you can Sometimes our police officers can be a little Not bit on advised. edge and getting out of the car is the wrong thing to do. So make sure you don't do that in the United States. Just stay in your car and wait for the police officer to approach your window. The third thing on the list is- And keep your hands on the wheel. Never forget to tip. This is something that comes up a lot in my other never do this videos. Unless they're total assholes. And it's usually- At like the, the wait staff or whoever you're tipping. If they're an asshole then. Sure, go ahead and forget it. The <laughs> other side of it, because in a lot of countries, it's not customary to tip. Servers in other countries don't rely on tips for their income. They're paid a higher wage, so it's not a big deal. But in the United right. States, servers rely on their tips to pay the bills. Normally, you should tip somewhere between 15 and 25% when you go to a restaurant, when you take a cab. 25 is crazy to me, to me. To me, that's crazy. I've never tipped 25. It used to be 15 to 20. When did it become 25? I'm not sure. 
tab, when you go get your nails done, things like that. Next thing on the list is never get too close. In the US, we really like our personal space. When I was in the military, I actually lived in Italy for two years. I moved there in 1998 and I had never lived outside of the United States before. I had a little bit of culture shock. In Italy, Italians don't really have a sense of personal space. When you meet an Italian and greet them, even if you just met them, usually you kiss each other on the cheek. That's something in the really? US that we just don't do. Also in most other countries, it's perfectly acceptable to get right up on somebody in a line or push or try to go around them. In the US, we have like a very orderly system and we don't like people too close to us and we don't get too close to somebody else. So yeah, just make sure you respect people's space unless they invite you in their space. Okay. That is definitely an interesting thing to think about because it just feels completely natural to me. Like it's like your natural personal bubble, you know? It's a flexible bubble. You know, people can come in, people can squeeze if they need to, especially at a bar. If you're at a bar, a busy bar, no personal space. That's probably the one place where, or like a concert, no personal space. Okay, the next one is a little bit political, but never say you like or you dislike Trump. We're... <laughs> We're just so, so politically divided right now in the United States. It is kind of tiresome to hear about. It's just best to steer clear of that discussion. So when you're talking about just visiting a place. I could imagine like a European or something coming over here and just because all of all the people they know over there in Europe hate Trump, they might come over here and think like, think that's the way it is here. And it's not. Obviously. I mean, he was voted into office so i could i could imagine something like that is you don't really have to get involved in the political rhetoric that goes on okay the next one is a real sticking point with me and one of the things that i really don't like about the united states never think you can rely on public transportation <laughs> other than a few cities like new york and dc the public transportation systems in the united states are not very good if you're in smaller towns or rural areas it's basically non-existent we are very i'd say the best public transportation is the scooters you can rent a scooter <laughs> That is the most reliable form of public transportation. And it's not even, what, would that be considered public? Cause it's privately owned, but the public can use it. I don't know. Pretty much a car culture in the United States. And that's kind of how we get around. We don't really have a good nationwide train system. And the ones we have, they're not very fast. So you can't transit from city to city by train and expect to get there I've in a I've never been time. on a train. You're going to have to either drive or hop on a plane. That's just how it is in the United States. I know it sucks. So just be prepared to not use public transportation. Okay, the next one, never call soccer football. Football is a completely <laughs> different thing in the United States. But, I mean, I'm kind of being devil's advocate to this guy. Like, I don't mean to contradict everything he's saying but it's kind of like, why am I even, no. I'm just thinking of like counterpoints. Um, if you've got an accent and you're calling it football, people are gonna know what you mean. Like, they might be like, oh, oh, you're talking about soccer. Like I was confused for a moment. Yeah, right, European football. Got it, got it. So it's not like it's a big deal. I don't think anybody's gonna be offended. Like, did you just call it? You just call it football. That ain't fucking football. It's American football. When you're in America, you talk about American football. That's that's soccer. That's for kids. I don't know. You might, maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's some guy like that somewhere. Than it is in the rest of the world. It does not matter that your football is. And uh, soccer is not for kids. I don't know. A lot of kids here do play soccer, so I can imagine that that could be what that fictional character might think. Just trying to explain myself, because my personal view, soccer is awesome. Football is awesome. It's the most popular sport in the world. In the United States, American football is the most popular sport, and we just call it football. You can try, but you're never going to convince an American that soccer is better than American football. Someone like Ronaldo could walk around the United States, and most people would not recognize him. <laughs> that's that's true that's true i would i would i would next 
Never expect Americans to be able to speak any other language than English. Unfortunately, it's just not something we prioritize. I'm also definitely guilty of this. Because of the influence of US pop culture and tourism, almost everywhere I've been, I've been able to get by with English. For better or worse, we don't really need to speak another language. So we have- I mean, that's just kind of the truth. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, we don't really need to. Like, which language? The thing is, in school, at most high schools, maybe all, you have to pick a foreign language. So everybody here has studied one foreign language or another for the most part. Um, not very deeply, like two years of it. And uh, it's kind of like everybody just picks whatever. Some people pick French. Some people pick German. Some people pick most, uh, probably the most popular is Spanish. But it's kind of like... Mm. Because English is pretty much the second language in every country where it's not the first language. So it's like, why? It's just, which language w would you pick? Like, if I was, like, seriously considering, okay, I need to learn another language. <laughs> I guess Spanish would be, like, the most practical. But at the same time, I don't plan on moving to Mexico. I haven't made it a priority in the United States. I know this is a- And, and most m people, you know, Mexicans who move to America can speak some English or, or completely speak English. A little bit of a generalization, and I have some friends that are bilingual, but for the most part, Americans tend to speak only English. Number nine, never expect our pharmacies to just sell pharmaceutical stuff. Mm. In most other countries, pharmacies only have pharmaceutical stuff. In the United States- <laughs> I'm just laughing because that's kind of a funny, like, a foreign person walks into an American pharmacy, they're like, what the heck? <laughs> I expected them to only sell pharmaceuticals here. What the, why are they selling chips? <laughs> what the heck, this is outrageous. This is an outrage. <laughs> it's. Pharmacies are more like general stores. They have a little bit of everything. In most CVS's, Facts. Walgreens, Rite Aid's, you can buy your pharmaceutical stuff. You can also buy food. Yeah, look, they got you detergent. You can buy toys. You can even buy beach equipment. Our pharmacies aren't just pharmacies. Another little side note. It's yeah, and that's just kind of like a free market thing. I'm surprised it's not that way in other countries because clearly... At least here in America, there's a big demand for that. Like if you're going to pick up some, you know, medicine, you maybe you need some other things to buy. I don't know. Whatever. It's really hard to get a drug to market in the United States. So things that are commonly available at pharmacies throughout the world might not be available in U.S. Oh, really? pharmacies. So just be aware of that when you travel to the United States. That's actually fascinating. Rule number 10. So other countries have like a lot more medicines on the shelves. Ooh, I want to go try them. <laughs> try some crazy medicines that aren't here in America. Never drink if you are under 21 <laughs> years of age. No American has ever followed that law Most of or that recommendation. The rest of the world has a much lower drinking age than the United States. In Vietnam, you can drink at any age. In the US, wow. drinking laws any are very, age. very strict. So make sure if you're under 21 that you're not trying to buy or drinking alcohol. Another side note is never drink in public. Most cities and states have strict open container laws, which means if you're walking around with alcohol and it's open. That should be where you, you know, like go to visit, you know. Screw New York, screw Disney World. Look up where the open container laws are the best. Like uh, Las Vegas, go there. You can carry a beer around. <laughs> you can be ticketed or fined. Okay, so those are my things to never do in the United States. Do you have anything to add? If you I feel like he's like my high school bully, like he's got my neck up against the locker. Do, make sure you put it down in the comments. If you disagree with some of the things I said, make sure you also comment. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> I did enjoy it, that was excellent. This guy's, this guy's good. 30 and a wake up. That's such a unique channel name. Go check him out, link down below. That was actually a lot of fun. I'm gonna have to react to more like American things. I don't know. It's interesting taking a look from the other side of the hourglass. That made no sense. Um, thank you for watching.
I hope to see you again next week. Goodbye.